Hey everybody, I'm here to talk about the latest episode of The Strain. So in this episode, it picked up where we left off last week with Abraham finding out that the lumen was gone and they automatically assumed that it was Quinlan who took it. So luckily, Fett had put a tracking device in the book so that if anything happened to it, they could always track it. See, Fett, he didn't, you know, he didn't really trust Quinlan anyway. So that was perfect. So Abraham was proud of him and they had their little moment where, you know, they kind of high fived, even though, you know, they didn't really high five. But also, we find out about Zach's birth, um, which is odd to me. Y'all let me know. Is this. Well, they said it was an uncommon thing, but I wonder if it really happens for real because I have no idea. He wasn't born naturally. He was taken by a C-section, but when they took him out, he was still enveloped in the sack. And so they had to open it up and get him out. So that was supposedly like an abnormal kind of a birth because you know normally when they do a c-section they go ahead and cut right into the womb and they pull the baby out but with him he was still in his sack so i don't know i wonder if that has something to do with why they're choosing the master is choosing him to be special or is it just because he needed to get to ephraim now listen y'all i have to stop here and say I mess people's names up all the time, so please excuse me if I mess up some of these characters' names, because I'm horrible with names. I've been calling Ephraim, Ephraim, bear with me. And another backstory we got to see was Quinlan. Now, they called him Quintus, but I don't know, so we're just, I'm still going to call him Quinlan, okay? So, apparently, how Quinlan came to be is... His mother was bit by a vampire, Strigoi, uh, while she was pregnant. And so I think she turned, but um, Quinlan didn't. But he somehow inherited some of their traits. See, she was bitten by the master. And so maybe it was a special kind of something in his blood that made Quinlan be the way that he is. And also we find out that he was caged up somewhere and you know, you know how they kind of do a freak show. He was kind of a sideshow and this woman found him and she knew exactly what he was. And so she got him and she schooled him and you know, she kind of taught him a few things, but eventually he ended up having to kill her because some of his kind closed him up and oh no, it was the master, wasn't it? The master sealed him up in this cave but see, I'm forgetting who he is because the master had a different body, of course, um, back then. And so he closed him up in that cave and he said, you need to really learn your true nature, which meant that he was going to have to eventually kill uh, the woman that was there with him. But she sacrificed herself because she was dying anyway and she wanted him to live and she said she loved him just like her own son and he ended up drinking her blood giving him strength enough to get out of the cave so then later on we find out that his livelihood is connected directly to the master so if the master dies he dies but he don't care because it's his mission to rid the world of the master and you know in the strigoi all together so he and ephraim they are on the same page um Ephraim wants his son back and Quintus, Quinlan wants to kill the master. So they're on their mission to go do it. So they got in touch with the master and they met up with him and Ephraim said, bring my son. And that's the only way that you're going to get this book. So of course the master shows up and um, Ephraim's wife shows up and they have this kid with a bag over his head. And come to find out, it's really not his son. Zach is not there. So then out of nowhere, here comes Quinlan with his guns and he's shooting, you know, with two hands. And it's looking like it's going good until y'all remember the Navy SEALs that got killed um, 
I guess that was what the first episode Fett and Abraham they were tracking the book so they knew exactly where Ephraim and them were so they got there to kind of see from a distance what was happening so anyway the Navy SEALs were actually turned and the master was using them so Quinlan got ambushed they all got ambushed because it was so many of them SEALs and you know they were precise so they shot Quinlan up but he still managed to get close enough to the master and he cut his head off. But as soon as he does that, this big worm ugh, comes out of him and it goes down the drain. So of course, the master is not dead because his little worm is still alive. But as soon as he chopped off the master's head, he fell over and presumably died but I don't think so if his fate is directly tied to the master then he'll probably reanimate as soon as that worm gets into another body which made me mad because once again because y'all were in such a rush to kill the master and get the master you didn't know about this worm that was going to come out of him nobody knew about it Abraham didn't know nobody knew because y'all didn't let Abraham take the time to figure out how to accurately kill him See, Quinlan just thought, look, I'm going to show up, I'm going to pop off, I'm going to cut his head off, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to kill this body. But he really didn't understand fully what it took to really kill him. So now the worm is off looking for another body and it's just all a mess. So I'm, I'm curious to see if Quinlan will come back to life as soon as the master comes back to life. And how Ephraim is going to be treated by Abraham them now that they know he's willing to steal from them just to get his son back. Do y'all think that Ephraim thinks that his son is dead or changed? Because he said that that's what he would assume if the master didn't bring his son. So do y'all think he's going to be mourning the loss of his son and letting him go now that he thinks he's possibly dead or turned? Let me know in the comments below. And the last thing that happened. So, of course, Gus is still in the house feeding his mama his blood. He's somewhere laid up, um, half dead. And there was a knock at the door. And it was Angel. Oh, is it me? I thought Angel and them were gone. I thought that Gus put them on a boat, a ship, a plane, or something. He put them somewhere. And they got to leave. Maybe I missed it. Anyway. Angel shows up and he sees what's going on with Gus and his mom is still alive and he's like, what are you doing? And so he tries to persuade him to go ahead and take his mother out because he said, look, your mother is gone. But of course, Gus is not with that and he threatened him, you know, like, don't touch my mama, blah, blah, blah. And then they find out that the police are there and they're trying to quarantine the building to get all the vampires out. So they know they have to move her or else they're going to kill her. So they strap her down to this wheelchair and they try to get her out but they get caught in the end and the mother gets away and you know she kills one of them you know gets her a meal before she dips and they take Gus and Angel to this it looked like a gym or something but basically what they do is they tell them look um we ain't got time to be sitting up feeding y'all and giving y'all somewhere to live and stay while we out here risking our lives so y'all need to suit up so I think they're going to make them fight with them to kill the vampires. So that's everything that happened in this episode. If I forgot anything, please leave the comments below and let's keep the conversation going. And I will see you all next week for the next episode. Bye.